Well, there we got the trailer in. Let's go find a piece of suitable metal. <laughs> This is a scrap iron pile where we keep all of our huh, quote unquote scrap metal. But a lot of it gets used for our projects and different things that we do here and there. Kind of looking for a piece of channel or something that I can weld across there. But I'd settle for something else if I could find the right, the right deal. Maybe a piece of pipe. That might do it. Well, I found a piece after some deliberations. It's a, an old piece of the front of a uh, one of our old swather headers. Cut it down to 65 inches. And I got did some grinding here, so I got a good spot to weld to. Got my welding lead strung out. That is our welder, by the way. That is, now I know somebody's probably going to comment and tell me I'm wrong, and if I am, I am, I'm more than happy to admit it, but my understanding is that that's a late 1940 something Forney Arc welder, just an AC, um, AC current, pretty simple machine, but I'll tell you what, it, it works just as good as anything that anybody around here has anyways, for as old as it is. But uh, it can be a little bit hard to get it to strike an arc sometimes, and it's not real stable on low voltage. But it's a good machine. Does the trick. As you can see, we do a pretty good handful of welding. We always keep quite a few rods on hand. We don't have a rod heater. I know that's another thing that might get mentioned, but, you know, just never have used one. Use a lot of 6013. We got... Uh, um, some 6010 in here somewhere. We use some 7018 when I'm doing the nice welds, like on that grill guard I built. And then we've even got some nickel rod and some things like that for, for doing some specialty welding. Great big old box of 6013. Huh, crazy. But anyways, I'm gonna get this uh, piece in place and see if I can get Kayla to hold the camera. And uh, we'll show you guys uh, some welding I'm doing. Oh. Well, we're all ready here. Got the piece in place. Maybe Kayla will come over here and show you the piece I got here. This is how we're going to put it in there and weld it here and then along the back side. But uh, anyways, here we go. Going to use a 6013 eighth inch rod. Now I'm using too big of a rod and that's part of the reason why I'm doing a bit of a stitch weld here. So it's going to be kind of slow going. I don't think I've got a small enough rod to do, to actually weld to body plates. It's kind of tough stuff to weld to, but we'll keep going anyways. We've got to get it welded in there. Uh, it looks like i got a little bit of slag going on in there, but we can fill that later. Not too bad though. I'm gonna get my chipper and we'll chip off some slag and see what we got underneath. Well, we got this all straightened up, so we're just gonna put some tack welds on here, fill in where these welds are at, and uh, we'll be good to go. Well, we got her done. It's uh, definitely not my most beautiful work, but it'll hold. It's been a handful of months since I've welded, so I'm a little bit rusty. Then I had it on the wrong heat range to start with, and I don't have small enough rod. I should be using 
just a little bit smaller than an eighth for welding on this thin body panel. But, like I said, it'll work decent enough anyways. Well, we're down at the haystacks. Time to see if this deal works the way I was hoping it would. So over to the tractor we go. Gotta load up a bale. See if this silly crack addict will start. Give it a throttle. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. It's 50 degrees out. This is ridiculous. Well, what did I tell you? Just like a crack addict, it needs its go go juice. That's right, we'll give you a whiff. Oh, there you go. Get your fix for the day. Onward ho! Hey, kind of looks like that might have done the trick. Box isn't bent up and my piece is still intact. Well, we'll know for sure when I get up there and make sure I can tip it up easy enough. Well, here we are. Ready to feed the bowls. Let's see if my uh, little upgrade here worked get my knife out and cut the wrap these bales like this are a little bit nicer I mean they're the same same bale essentially as the others but it's just they're wrapped a little differently you know traditionally round bales are wrapped up with uh, with mo what most people know and that's the red twine and uh, a lot of bales nowadays are actually wrapped up with this wrap. It's kind of a mesh. Really nice to try and keep track of, you know, and it's just easier than picking up all the twines and trying to cut twines. Anybody who's ever cut twines off a round bale knows what I'm talking about. Because they get lost and it just, uh, it can turn into a big trouble. But anyways, so i going to pull this wrap back here. There, we're getting her. Okay. And we unhitch the trailer. Put a block behind the wheel. Jack it up. See if this works the way it's supposed to. Ideally, I should be able to grab the tongue and just pick it right up. But, hasn't been working that way because the bale's been sitting too far close into the tongue. So, here we go. Okay, well that's not gonna work. Let's uh, see if I can find a decent place to set the camera. There. Oh yeah! There it is. The bale just rolls on out. Ah, oh, shit. Rolls right on into the fence is what it does. Oh, son of a bitch. Well, that sucks. What a pain in the ass. Oh well, yes I'll go fix that.